Israel. Rav Hutner Zechreina Levracha once asked about the Gemara in Sukkah that says that La'asid Lavai there will be a hesped for the Satan. And Rav Hutner asked, what could you already say a hesped on the Satan? And Rav Hutner Zechreina Levracha answered and he said, that he mixed in in good places. There were a lot of technical difficulties that we apologized for, but I consider it a sin type. It's a good sign that it's a good place and we're here for good things. Those of us that are in another room that hear us but don't see us yet, Mitzvah Shem, within the next few moments, it's working. <laughs> this evening, as we usher in the Chaydish of Kabbalah Satayra, the month of Kabbalah Satayra, we know that the first days up until of Kabbalah Satayra, the Yemei Hachana. They were days of preparation. And the Gemara in Shabbos explains to us the preparations that were made every single day so that we might be ready for that awesome moment in the history of Klal Yisrael of Kabbalah Satayra. And classically, Kabbalah Satayra is referred to in Shir Hashirim as a chasana between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Klal Yisrael. And therefore, these days before Kabbalah Satayra would be the preparations to enter into a chuppah with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And I think that everybody that has gathered here this evening would assume for a very davar pashot that if one is preparing for a chuppah with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, one of the basic requirements of a chuppah with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is that we prepare ourselves in what is one of the most basic hallmarks of Klal Yisrael, Kedushas Yisrael. What would it look like to prepare for a chuppah and not to be prepared in terms of the kedusha that's necessary to go to a chuppah? Kedushas Yisrael is preserved and flows from one particular area in halacha not in Chasidus, but in, in straight halacha, the halachas of Tznius. However, very often people either don't understand the halachas of Tznius, there's a lack of knowledge, there's a lack of appreciation of what the deeper meaning of what Tznius is, and the kinos this evening is to prepare us for this chuppah with, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a hachana for Kabbalah Satayra, by covering the spectrum of the hashkafa that lies behind Sneos, the halacha that lies behind Sneos, and why it is such a fountain of Kedushas Yisrael, and how Kabbalah Satayra is contingent upon it. The Navi, tells us, Higid lecha adam matayv uma Hashem dayresh mimcha. I will tell you what I am really looking for from you. It's not thousands of karbanais, ki im asais mishpat va'avas chesed, va'atznei aleches 
HaKadosh Baruch Hu says that more significant than Karbanais is Chesed, Nishpat, and Tzniyos, Hatznei Alechas. While all three are extremely important, this evening is dedicated to the Halachas of Tzniyos and to the Hashkafa of Tzniyos. And I would like to share with you the interpretation of the Radak on what it means, Hatznei Aleches Imelekecha. The Radak says that Hatznei Aleches Imelekecha means that one should have Ahavas Hashem Bechol Levavayu Bechol Nafshay, to love Hashem with one's entire heart and with one's entire neshama, the Yichuda Yisbarach, and to believe in the oneness of Hashem. This is the Radak's interpretation of Hatznei Alechas. And immediately we need to ask, what happened to the classical definition of Tznius, that a person does things with modesty, in dress, in speech, in Hanhaga? Why does the Radak veer away from the classical and simple interpretation of Tznius? and all of a sudden give such a philosophical, such a hashkafedic interpretation of what Sneos is. Parenthetically, the Radak asks, what does this have to do with Sneos loving Hashem and believing in his oneness and his echad? So the Radak says it's very simple because one's love of Hashem and believing in his oneness is something in the heart and it's hidden in the heart. So it's Sneos, so that's Sneos. Now that also needs to be understood because we know that there are many, many principles in Yesaidais in Chayvas Halavavis. So let's call all of Chayvas Halavavis the Halachas of Tzniyos. Why does the Radak choose two of the Chayvas Halavavis of Avas Hashem and Yehudai and choose those two and say, that's Tzniyos? <laughs> A place to begin in understanding the Radak would be in how the Chavis Halvavis sums up Shar Yichud HaMaisa. At the end of Shar Yichud HaMaisa, the Chavis Halvavis is speaking about how a person needs to serve Hashem with pure dedication. And the Chayva Salvavis says, be sure that all of your actions should be done with a pure dedication, because if they're not done with a pure dedication, your toil is for nothing, and your trouble is all to naught. It's all false. Very strong words. A person is doing mitzvahs, a person is learning taira, a person is doing ma'asei chesed. And the Chayvah Salvavah says that if a person isn't dedicated to Hashem in those things, then he is amlecha lirik, his work is empty, and his trouble is sheker, it has a falseness, it has an, a lack of authenticity in it. How do we understand the Chayvah Salvavis? What does the Chayvah Salvavis mean? So let's begin by explaining by example and it, the marshal of Tzniyos in mitzvahs, in doing mitzvahs. Take, for example, an individual who only performs a certain mitzvah or group of mitzvahs only when there is an audience. You'll never find him doing the mitzvah in private. And it's not the kind of a mitzvah that needs an audience. But for some reason, he only does the mitzvah in an audience, when people are watching. And privately, he would not do the mitzvah. What would we say about such a performance of a mitzvah? The first thing that we could deduce is that obviously this person 
has not found the inherent meaning of the mitzvah. Because if he would be doing the mitzvah for the inherent meaning of the mitzvah, why is he only doing it in an audience? Bifahesya. The inherent value of the mitzvah doesn't require the audience, so why is he only doing it with an audience? So obviously, this person is either not knowledgeable or uncaring about the inherent meaning of the mitzvah, and he has attached to the mitzvah really a superficial value that he superimposed upon the mitzvah, which has other people's praise and applause for him. But the inherent value of the mitzvah, he's not connecting to it all. In addition to this, if a person only does a mitzvah when people are looking, then obviously who he's out to serve is not HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but he's out to serve himself. Because if he was out to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so why is it contingent upon an audience? Ah, I'm serving myself, so I want the plus, so I need an audience. So then it's avodas atzmo, then I'm serving myself, I'm not serving Hashem. Flip it on the other side. A person who has the discipline to do a mitzvah and works to do a mitzvah not in public, but works to do a mitzvah as tsanua, as quietly and as shashtil as possible, obviously that person knows that a mitzvah has an inherent value and that what they are looking to do is not to serve themselves with kavod, but they are looking to serve Hashem. Therefore, the Radak, obviously the Radak knew the literal and the down-to-earth definition of tznius. But what the Radak is trying to explain to us is what is this makeup, the ruchniistic makeup of the person in order to be able to behave in a way of tznius. Let's say in the tznius of doing a mitzvah with tznius. So that, the Radak says, if a person really loves Hashem with his whole heart and with his whole neshama, so that will become the basis of his being able to do the mitzvah bitzniyus. So the Radak is addressing the shayrish. The Radak is saying, where is the strength within the person to do the mitzvah bitzniyus? That's the real root of the tzniyus. However, this only answers half of the Radak. Because the Radak says Tznius is loving Hashem with one's whole heart. But the Radak also says it 